only when you really get in here, George, you realize how many lives we've taken on this windscreen. On the road with George Dobell and Jared Kimber, two journeymen making their way between Ash's cities, armed with only cameras, partial wits, and Ash's spirit. Tree of knowledge. Yes, back in 1891, uh, the shearers, shearers strike, the shearers were having a blue at the pastures and it was the site of their, all their altercations. Uh, unfortunately, back in 2006, someone decided to poison the damn thing. Unfortunately, they haven't been caught, but it's a really historical site now, the, uh, the birthplace of the Australian Labor Party. I told you, Warwickshire are better than Queensland. Stupid kangaroo. What's it called? Camomile. 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 Camembert. Camomile. Whatever it's called. We're burnt out. Is a recurring problem. Camel wheel. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Well, there's a river just down there, and a lot of people go and see all the wildlife. And there's also the caves, which are about 24 caves out of Camel Wheel. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Is <laughs> burnout? Is burnout a problem? Yeah. Burnout? Yeah. What does that mean? Just too many late nights, too much excitement. Oh yeah, that is a major issue in Camel Wheel. <laughs> Do you not think the ashes is a little bit overhyped anyway? Yes. Yeah, I, I was writing a piece for a, I think it was a Dubai magazine, um, and it was, it's quite weird to write about the ashes when you realise you're writing for people who aren't Australian or English. And I was, you know, I was trying to say that, basically, there are two reasons why it's still relevant. One is because it is a five test series that people look forward to, and the other is because it makes a lot of money. Everything else about it is sort of nonsense, yeah? But, how good was it to see you know, the whole city of Brisbane. I know you might not might not like the patriotism and that's part of the reason I became the sort of runner I was because I, know, I, know, I thought Brisbane was fantastic. No, I thought the way that it Korea no, Mail, no, I mean. I thought that was uh, juvenile and yeah, tedious. That's what I'm saying. But isn't it great the way the whole city just basically became a clear yeah, city? Yeah, wonderful. Really lovely. G'day. Well, it's pretty hot today. We've got a lot of driving. I think it's 400 k's till the next shop or roadhouse or anything. So we're going to have to be pretty careful. The temperature got to 44 degrees yesterday. So we've read about how people break down and end up drinking their own urine. And just to make sure, we've filled the back with bottles of our own urine. The ashes is it is only two countries. It's, it's kind of like the boat race. And, uh, and the thing is that it's tapped into a consciousness which is away from just cricket. So, so you've got sort of mass media and mass market stuff uh, who are interested. You've got people turning up to KP press conferences with pictures of Wally Lewis. Yeah, and yeah, but but just no, but that's that, what I'm saying. That's when media. you bring in. That's when, when basically when a sporting event is that big, it brings in the non-sporting press. Yeah, that's what the Ashes did in Brisbane, which is a good thing and a bad thing because obviously it promotes the sport um, a lot, but a lot of it's nonsense. Ninety-nine percent of it is nonsense. And that is great history and stuff, and that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, and the two countries. I, I like to think it's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, I'm not sure it is. No, I think it's it quite a lot of hate. But uh, it's becoming quite hateful. But I, I, I like to think there's quite a lot of mutual respect, really. Because if an Australian guy walks into a bar in London, he's going to be welcomed. And, you know, us doing this road trip everywhere we've gone, people have been fantastic, haven't they? But that's because everywhere we've gone, they've been German barmaids. No, no. Actually, the one bar we've gone into, which has been run by an Australian, he was a bit of a idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he was, too! He was. So it's 40 degrees, it's raining, and the sun's out. It's very confusing. Keep from a cricket point of view, we saw the uh, the second ranked test side, I think they're second ranked, beat the fifth ranked test side um, in a series where the second ranked test side didn't even do that well. Um, so it's all, wasn't so you can understand people in India and South Africa being a bit cynical about it. I can understand me being cynical, let alone them. I mean, and, and I think they've got every right to be cynical. Um, it, it, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a private game, this between. It's a private members game. I've also got this hat, which has a light on it, so I think you'll agree we're pretty much going to be safe in any circumstances. It's a bit like in, in Sri Lanka, where the most important cricket game is between those two schools. Is and, that right? And sometimes you think, 
oh, wait a minute, if you love cricket enough, why don't you then love, you know, it, why don't you love it enough to go to see Sri Lanka play? Why do you have to go see a school match? And I suppose it's the same with the Ashes. If these people love cricket so much, I mean, we had 140, 135,000 people at the Gabba. Yeah. You know, that's what it should be for every game. They were reinvigorated by England winning in 2005 because at last it made it a contest. Yeah, but I don't think it was that bad during the, the bad years, even. I think there was still something to be said for people still enjoyed it, and you know, but but regardless of that, you know what's going to sound bad is snoring in the back. <laughs> Two eggs, tomato, hash brown, bacon, two sausages, and steak. Oh, and toast. Toast as well. And steak. Don't try this at home. They don't usually let you come this close.